Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sports Scope. I'm your host, Robert Butler, on this, I want to say, was it 14th day of December, 11 day from Christmas. My true love gave to me. Uh, anyways, I got Andre Gibson coming on here in just a few minutes. I want to ask him about this Detroit Lions. Uh, he, he's very familiar with the 90s Lions teams. Last time they won a playoff game was 19. 19- 91-1992 season. Also going to get into the tool situation. Uh, the Brittany Griner situation didn't break until last Thursday. And Lincoln Riley, everybody. Uh, we'll be back here in just a minute, 19. That was a quick preview. Let me take a break, and I'll be back with Andre Gibson here uh, to do a little commentary here. Stand by, folks. Hello, SportsCope followers. After five years of doing this program, once a week, balancing a 60-hour work week job, I've decided to do the program five days a week, one hour a night, taking a significant pay cut. So I've started a Patreon page, which is Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash SportsCope, spelled the same way at the bottom of the screen you see there, for $5 a month, 17 cents a day. You can help support the program. You ask yourself, why SportsScope? Well, I bring in such big names uh, such as Al Borges, former Auburn offensive coordinator, and and I cover the big news uh, in sports that the corporate media will not cover. If you want to contribute more than $5 a month, you can go use the cash app. The cash tag is SportsScope, again, spelled the same way, or you can go to the Zelle app, sportscope at gmail.com. Uh, Sportscope has about 5,000 followers and growing. If you want to advertise on the program, you can email me. The word is sportscope, spelled the same way again, at gmail.com. Thank you and enjoy the program. Here, I'm live here now. Hey, Andre, how you doing, man? How you doing this evening? How y'all man, doing? you sound show? good. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I brought another computer out uh, out of retirement just for the show, man. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, man. I had a rough day today. I tell you, I was uh, really going at it with a guy from uh, a ballet guy, and uh, man, we was arguing like a, a umpire and a baseball player today. And I thought, you know, I used to do security. I, I guess I'll cut the guy some slack. I, I'll apologize to him tomorrow. Uh, it was a long day, but. You know, I wanted to ask you, uh, Pickle says, hey, Mr. Andre. Tell her, hi, hi, Miss P. How you doing this evening? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I wasn't sure how familiar you were with the shock of um, Mike Leach, uh, head coach of uh, Mississippi State pass, sudden pass, man. Did you follow him any? uh, Because I know you keep up with the college game. Uh, You know, he used to coach at Texas Tech. Washington State, uh, he, he was one of the innovators of the air raid offense, particularly to the college game. What's your thoughts about Mike Leach, the Mississippi State coach, passing uh, last night, man, or Monday, excuse me? Man, I tell you what, uh, he was a young guy, only 61 years old, and it, it was a shock in the college world, especially to the Starksville faithful down there, man. I, I know um, – he had a 19 and 17 record, but um, yeah. he was going to do a lot of good things in Mississippi, man. But God called him home to, to call oh, uh, audibles up the stairs, man. And <laughs> that's the only thing I can come up with as far as Mississippi uh, statement. I really didn't follow them per se, yeah. but, you know, it was a shock. And, you know, we, we definitely sending out blessings to the Mississippi yeah. State family and the family of him, you know, uh, as yeah. well. It, it was just a shock, man. You just, you just never know, man. When when your number gonna get called, man. Yeah, you know, he was eight and four last year, and uh, their last game was on Thanksgiving. They won the in-state rival game against Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Uh, probably got a better team on paper. Guy's a good coach. He just um, that style of play. It's hard to win a national championship. Usually those teams wear down that throw the ball that many times, but they will come up with a good upset. Uh, you know, he's always had some funny one-liners over the years, heavily opinionated in, in everything. Um, 
But I had to ask you, it was a big story there. It's real sudden because the guy just coached this past year. It wasn't like he had cancer or something like that. But there was some more big news with Brittany Griner. Uh, she being able, they did the trade, got her to come home. You know, last Thursday I was talking about, you know, these players, man, taking these huge chances. Uh, well, going over there in these hostile countries, and I'm hearing and reading that players are still going to Russia, Andre, and playing basketball. What's your thoughts about uh, that shocking news bringing her back? Uh, it was crazy she even got over there for that months over something like that. Uh, what's your thoughts on that whole situation, man? Man, you know what? Um, I'm glad you touched on it because I've been seeing and reading different various reports on social media and yeah. other news outlets about her. You know, she went over there to play to make additional revenue that she wasn't getting in the WNBA. They don't really pay those ladies a lot of money. Yeah, They know that going into it, is it fair to say that? No, no, it's yeah. not. But for them to go overseas and play Russia – this girl has been playing over there, man. This wasn't no one and done year. And all at that time, they knew at some point they were going to make their move and use her as a political pawn. And uh, I, I just feel our players going forward, maybe even in the NFL, man, uh, NBA, wherever they go, to do these goodwill games like the globe try to type game where they go yeah. to england and all that just stop man because all it's gonna do open up a pandora's box every every country that has issues with the great usa yeah. are gonna find ways to leverage players and stuff for their own political and financial game man and no, i wouldn't do it now if no money good enough for me man that girl was looking at nine years in the penal yeah. prison over there and you know, we had to give up a lot, man. We left yeah. one behind to bring her back. You yeah. know, she had histories of not coming out doing the uh, national anthem. Yeah. So people torn on her, man. They really were saying stuff like, hey, we ought to leave over there, which you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you, I felt bad for I don't agree with what she was talking about of that with the national anthem either. But it was just it just feels like they they targeted the woman and. I'm just curious. I'm just really shocked that something like this hasn't happened more often. Uh, Cause really it, it's your word versus their word. I mean, even if they didn't find those vape cartridges, you know, who, who's to say that they could just say, okay, well, she's a spy. Well, we're, we're just going to, we're going to make espionage act or something like that. Uh, anything to, to, to hold, get a one up on the America. Cause see the thing about it is we don't know. Now, we all knew about the Ukraine war boiling over. I was seeing mm -hmm. reports of that in January of this year. And, of course, it was in February that this all this went down. I do kind of blame her agent and 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 uh, uh, coaches or anything to, to, get, uh, to get them out of there. But my thing is we don't know what other uh, conflict that may be brewing that's not on the news or anything like that. And you could be wrong place, wrong time. I mean, I, that was scary, man. Nine years for something like that. She was over there nine months. That's like jaywalking, you know? Hey, man, um, the girl cut her hair because the braids froze, dude. So they tell you what kind of conditions that she was. I would just love to have been a, an American fly on the wall over there just to see <laughs> how her food was on a yeah. daily basis. The bed that she was sleeping on would look like a kitty bed, man, like a a, a little single size bed. Yeah. And, and it was just a lot of issues that she had to face no more than Mr. Whelan uh, is probably facing yeah. in his present situation, man. But me, I, I wouldn't go over there. I don't think she'd ever say anything else in a negative sense about this country again, man, or <laughs> I bet she'll run out and, 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 and saying, uh, I've been kissing the ground since metal. I walked in the airport, man. Since hey man, I, I tell you, she, um, she was very blessed, man, that I'm surprised the WNBA didn't put up like a ransom for her return or, yeah. you know, they, they just didn't do it, man. And Hey, you know, this is election season too. So yeah, hey, I'm, you know, you know how it goes, man. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what, and I, I don't know. It, I guess my whole argument was 
you know, Shannon uh, Freeman guy used to work security at Walden with the worked on the state account, big guy, mm-hmm. six foot eight. You may have seen him around. He mm-hmm. would tell me when he would do overseas stuff, he'd play semi pro basketball. He didn't even know if these people were going to pay him half the time. You know, when you're, I mean, I understand following your dream, taking chances, but man, you're talking about China, Russia, shady owners. You don't know if you're going to get paid. You don't know if you're going to get out of the country. It's just, it just doesn't seem like it's worth it, but people will, will, will chance that thing to, to, to make a few extra dollars, man. Man, you look at look at Rodman, for example, with North Korea, man. That yeah. guy was going back and forth over there. What if he caught Kim Young on a bad day, man? He might be <laughs> in the blow bitch over there, man. I wouldn't have done it, man. And like I said, money ain't gonna be no good to you when you're in the ground, brother. So I think I would have paid I would pass on overseas sports, man, if I was an athlete. I don't care how how bad my uh, finances are, man. Go out and sign some some uh, memorabilia, or do something, yeah. man. But don't don't do that, man. It, it just it, it's the dangerous time, and it sets the presidents all around the world, man. Uh, I just think it's gonna be more similar type stuff to come, man, with these countries, man. This, you know, it's crazy, man. It's just it I really just pray. Is. Yeah. I pray we get Mr. Whelan back, man. We need to try did to you, fight. Did you get? Uh, did you ever see that Dennis Rodman documentary? On when he went about 10 years ago, he ends up going to North Korea with some kind of basketball function with the with some other former players. And man, he's drinking on camera, he's really showing out. And those other players looked like they were scared to death. And they were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they wanted to kill this guy, man. Yeah, man, they wanted to do him. what Kim Young wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Like crazy. Yeah, I just I, there's no way I would go across the street with uh, uh, Dennis Rodman after that incident with some of those other players. I saw a documentary on it. Like I said, it was about 10, 12 years ago, and he was really acting crazy, drinking a lot of hard liquor on camera, hollering and stuff. And and you could still look on those other guys' faces like, man, this may be the end right here. They could just kill us all. We're over here. What are we going to do? You know? Well, you, you know how uh, – if you're a performer, for example, like uh, McCartney, when he did Paul the McCartney. USS Lara, yeah. them, them people are like this, man. They, they're they very docile. They they ain't used to all that crazy, wild uh, behavior, man. So Robin <laughs> might have uh, made diplomacy bad for us going over like that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> they could have kept him. You know what I mean? God. Right. <laughs> Luckily, uh, the guys that was a big Bulls fan, you know, the son, and they got home. But man, I would never, I would never try that again with Rodman, man. I tell you. Um, well, anyways, you know, I was watching uh, one of the bigger games of the week was Miami and the LA Chargers, and Tua. You know, if you've been watching my program, the guy's got one of the highest QBRs in all of the NFL. Uh, two of the best wide receivers, stat wise. Top five, we've got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, But, you know, they said he had had a, another injury leading up to that Charger game. He had an ankle injury. And I'm thinking to myself, they're in the playoff hunt right now. Uh, but you just got to wonder how concerning is that injury to Tua because it's just injuries in general. You know, he had he had the concussion. He had the ankle injury. Uh he that he got hurt in the 49er game in Cal here in California last week, and they got beat. It looked like it was bothering him this week. Last year, you know, he was injured. He missed games last year. Him and Brian Flores, the coach, didn't get along. He's got injuries going back to Alabama. Uh, it feels like they're going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. What's your what's your take on Tua, man? Do you continue to build around him and build that running game up, or what? Man, uh, if you ask the Dolphin uh, faithful, man, what do they think about building uh, a team around them going forward? You'll get a 50-50 split, man. Uh, you you will need, basically, man, uh, with draft picks and trades, you have to have a good O-line. And, um, you know, they got to have a good defense line, too, man, yeah. uh, to, to build around this guy. It's kind of iffy, man, on him. Yeah. I I got my take on on players like him, man. Uh, 
And it's another one, man, that I have to talk to you after the show on yeah. and get get your opinion on yeah. on how I feel about this type of quarterback that he's like. He remind me of another one, man, so so bad. I that the I just put it out there, man, that the Titans traded. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they, they 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 just you know I, I don't know man I know Miami faithful is pulling they have man because they scared right yeah. now but honestly who else do they have man yeah who who else do you see you know well <laughs> it, it's it, they have options they can go out and get another quarterback my my thing is this guy McDaniel's he's a big pass 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 guy. And the truth of the matter is, he's come from that San Francisco system, and they're on they're like third lowest rushing team in the NFL. Uh, I, I think they're going to have to lean more into that and and be more of a running team. He's so fragile. He reminds me of Sam Bradford. Remember Sam Bradford for the LA Rams? Very talented, good arm. This guy, but he was he had to wrap him in bubble wrap. Man, he was hurt all the time. Uh, get hurt off the airplane. One time I saw him get injured. He played with Minnesota, bounced around the league, played with Minnesota about six years ago. They had a really good season going for him. Uh, they had a great game on Monday night. They played the, the Saints and uh, dominated the game, played really well, looked like nobody even hit him. And then you find out he's injured for the season. You don't even know how he got injured. I kind of get that vibe from Tua, man. Tua is the Bill Walton of football, man. <laughs> he is, man. He's the Bill Walton of the NFL, man. This, this guy, like you said, he stepped on the field, man. He's subject to get turf toe. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's almost like Willis Reed, man, when he was playing in, uh, in for the Knicks, man, and playing against the Lakers, and he went down and Chamberlain said that he quit on the uh, Knicks. I'm just using these as examples. Yeah. Yeah, and you man. got the old – commentator jack wyman that's when abc would show you know games and, and i'm looking at tour like he he could he, i think i see him coming out of the tunnel you know <laughs> this guy's in the tunnel right now man I don't, I don't know if you if you bank on him down the stretch man and go out and get your qb or what man because I'm, I'm scared this guy is a concussion away from end up like steve young man it, it just right it, it's scary man it, it's yeah. scary yeah, Tua, and, and you know he had such. Remember the whole campaign when he'd come out tank for Tua. Uh, uh, everybody was high on Tua, and he looked great at Alabama. Uh, he 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 is a very, uh, very high uh, completion percentage, very high QBR. But the thing about him is he can't elude the pass rush. He he he's. For an NFL player, he's very slow. He's he's a little undersized height wise. Uh, he's got precision. And I was saying the other day, you know, under if this were uh, flag football, he would be fine. But it's tackle football. And going back to that San Francisco 49er game, they had their left tackle was 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 out. This Taron Armstead guy. Uh, they had another offensive line out, and he was really scared in that game because that's that 49er. He was throwing that ball like uh, 1.5 seconds. People wouldn't even get an open. He was so afraid <laughs> to get hit. And sure enough, Andre, he ends up getting his ankle injured anyways. They downplay it because you don't want the media pounding the uh, the other players about it. But the truth of the matter, if you watch any of that Charger game, it was because that ankle was still bothering him. And um, I think it, it, head coach there is very young. He, he, he looked like he wanted to uh, grandstand a little bit. Uh, the Chargers had a lot of defensive players out. They had a really good matchup with Tyree Kill and this Waddle. And they went pass, 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 pass. Didn't establish any run again. And it looked like Tua got banged up again. It just seems like the guy was playing at such a high level. They come back and beat Baltimore a few weeks ago, or earlier in the season. They beat Buffalo, and you get so high on the guy, but then he gets that really bad concussion. He gets hit. Uh, they say he didn't get a concussion one week. Remember then he played that Thursday night game back last – it was back in October, gets that concussion, and now it's like I don't know what to do with Tua, man, other than – 
they're going to have to lo- – I think part of me thinks that the reason why they're passing so much is the management wants to uh, validate to the ownership uh, – why we gave up so much to get Tyree Kill rather than doing what's right for Tua in that offense is run that ball. It's not fun. It's not pretty. But sometimes the best play is just a draw play, man. You know, and I just, I'm just really um, curious of how that's going to play out because he's such a talented player. But part of ability is availability, you know, and I, I don't know if he's going to make it. But I'm like, I don't know if I put a lot into him. I'm definitely not extending. You would you not extend him, even if they make the playoffs this year? That man, that, that'd be a long, a long thought process on that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> which I, I don't, uh, I don't see him making the playoffs, man. Uh, but you know, they might surprise me. But now, man, I, like I said, man, he's um. Whew. It's a scary thought with him, man. I'm just scared when he step on the field next season, man. Will this guy get us through the season without getting hurt, man? Because think about it, man. Them, yeah. them concussion protocols, how many can you get, man? You yeah. can't get too many. And I'm like Pickles. No, nah, he ain't going to have a good day in Buffalo. He'll be they eating Buffalo wings Saturday, man. Hey, he'll be eating buffalo wings all weekend because it'll be bad business for two up there, man. <laughs> it ain't going to be good for him. I hate to say it. He he can't go to that next level like them Bills, man. It's, it's not yeah. going to be a good day for him. I hate I to think, say it. I think Buffalo wins that division. A lot of people still had Miami winning that bit, and I was like, nah, I don't, I don't nah. think so. No. Nah. No, 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 <laughs> not with two at the ham. I'm not afraid not, man. And you know what's really me. funny about Miami is, I mean, I like Teddy Bridgewater, but he's like, another guy that's hurt all the time, you know? Yep. It's, yep. Uh, my dad would call it a hurt locker. You know, um, yeah, so they, 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 they played two weeks in California. They played the 49ers a couple weeks ago. They played the Chargers Sunday. Uh, they so, so they stayed uh, essentially a, another week in California. So na- then they go now they're back in Miami, and then they got to go over to Buffalo on a short week. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be the Buffalo probably uh, that could be a blowout. Buffalo is licking their lips, man, waiting on Miami. To get there. <laughs> <laughs> they are gonna hand out Buffalo wings at Ralph Wilson Stadium like like you hand out Christmas and Halloween candy, man. man. It's gonna be bad, man. I yeah, hope, yeah. They want revenge it. too because they beat um the uh they end up beating the Bills. Uh uh they caught the Bills flat footed, you know, after they played Tennessee and, and they end up beating the Bills uh earlier in the season. So that they got a two game lead, that they'll probably shut Miami uh down as far as any kind of hope of winning that division. Now, uh, staying here in the NFL, NFC here. Now, the Lions, you go way back. I'm sure you kept up with Barry Sanders in the 90s. You know, who was better, Barry Sanders or Edmund Smith, right? Yep. Remember that argument? Now, oh. this this Lions team, they're in the playoff hunt. Uh, what are they, six and seven now? They beat, a uh, what was it, like a 10 and two Minnesota team last week, man. Uh, they, they've got a lot going for them. They've got one of the better offensive lines in football. Uh, they've got a winning streak. Uh, they have a chance to make the playoffs. It seems like they have a really good foundation. If you look at their their offensive line, you, you look at the receiving core, this Dan Campbell guy, I thought he was too much of a rah-rah guy up there. But I, I got a feeling that this team has an opportunity. they got a lot of cap room next year, man. Uh, Jared Goff is playing at a uh, some of the best football of his whole career. Uh, do you think this Detroit team? Do you think this is like a flash in the pan, or you really think that there's a possibility that they can they can have real stability in the NFC North? I, I look at it like this, man. It's, they started out a one and sixteen. Yeah. And, and, and turn it around, man. Uh, they basically got to win two games, man, to you know to, to make something happen for them. But me personally, how I feel about 
the lines, I think, if they buy in and put the uh, ingredients, you got to have the right ingredients, man, uh, to make the cake presentable. You can yeah. take a cake and leave out ingredients. It'll still be a cake, but it won't be a tasty cake. But yeah. Detroit, I think, is if the way they're going now, them sports area, all that's gone. I think Detroit is home. <laughs> like Golf is looking good, and 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 I think, you know, put some put some old uh, uh, corp and weapons around this guy, and yeah. I and I think Detroit might make a, a little rumble next season, man. You know, I ain't gonna yeah. tell you they're gonna be the uh, Buffalo Bills of that. Division, right. but I think they'll they'll be in the hunt. Uh, yeah, I, I'm believing in Detroit again, man. I hey, it's two things, three things they famous for Motown cars and Detroit Lions, baby. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. When up. I was researching for the day's program, mm -hmm. their last not appearance. Now they've been to the playoffs uh mm -hmm. with uh Matt Stafford a couple of times, but their last air quote playoff win was in 1992 over the Cowboys. Now, it was January 92. So, for the audience, it was the 91-92 uh, team. You had a young three-year back there in Barry Sanders. Uh, they won like 12 games that year. They ultimately lost to the then Washington Redskins, Mark Ripken, Joe Gibbs, they went on to win the Super Bowl. But, man, you're talking 30 years in a league where the worst team, Andre, gets the best. It's not like the NBA where you get a lottery. You know, you get the best players. But it's unbelievable how bad they've been over the years, man. But, you know, I'm looking at this team. I'm looking at the defense. They, they've hit on their defensive picks. Uh, it, it's like, like I said – like you said, not be Buffalo or anybody, but be a legit playoff contender, somebody that's been as sorry as, as the Detroit. I think that's a pretty interesting storyline coming into next year. And I, I like how you said Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz. Remember, that used to be the coordinator, defensive coordinator of the Titans. What's your beef with Jim Schwartz? Horrible. Horrible. That's all I can say to that one. Horrible. I, I, I just didn't come away – believing in him man i understand he was hungry wanted to have his his time in the sun man but yeah. it, it was a bad uh couple of years I, I can't remember how many years the guy stayed up there man but detroit <laughs> wasn't upset when he left i can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> he, he ain't there no more i can tell you that hey he ain't chucky man he ain't gruden to nobody so hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they brought Gruden back. They ain't bringing Swartz back. I bet you that. You know, you're the second guy I've had on here. They're mm -hmm. not too fond of Jim Schwartz. You know, um, I brought in Philly, the sports guy, a few weeks ago. He's talking about, man, I'm so glad we got rid of Jim Schwartz. Uh, uh, this guy will never blitz on defense. He plays the same predictable defense. Every year, and, uh, and then he tells me, he says, the guy finally blitzes. What he, uh, by the way, Brady had, what, four or 500 yards in that Super Bowl with the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Nick Foles outdueled him. He had, like, God was with him. Big Christian guy, you know, uh, I think he had close to 500. He outdueled uh, Tom Brady. And... It was one blitz call, is what my friend uh, Jamie said, for Jim Schwartz. And the funny thing, I'm talking to a friend of mine at work. You know, the, uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence looked like Joe Montana this past Sunday, uh, but uh, a mix between Montana and, and uh, 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 John Elway lit the Titans up. And this friend of mine at work who went to the game Sunday, I'm out of Nashville for the folks, Went to the game Sunday. He said, you know something I forgot? He said, man, Jim Schwartz has been a defensive uh, uh, consultant for this team. And he's like, they're just rushing four down linemen every single time. And this guy with a bad toe, which tells me if somebody's injured, why don't you put some heat on him and see how injured he is? Instead, Tennessee is just sitting back and he's picking them apart. And then you said that. 
So Schwartz, he's bad luck, man. How does he keep getting jobs? Man, um, I guess even a squirrel will find a uh, blind one will find a nut every now and then. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I, I guess he got luck and landed with some team, man. But like you said, my friend went to that game, uh, yeah. against Jacksonville, dude, and he said, man, they were booing. And I, I, I can, I can understand it. Buyers is, you know, you can see the look on his face when they do the local interview like in backstage in the yeah. you know locker room area he, he basically tired of losing and that's what I like to hear man because it basically lets me realize even though you making big money you're a millionaire type player you, yeah. you still like W's man don't nobody want to lose and I watched right. um the NFL um like red zone today man and they had like the AFC teams and the NFC teams like up on a balloon like a yeah. you know and you watch went, Red Zone? I watch yeah. Red Zone too every Sunday. Yeah, I do too, man. And, and they it. had they they had the Titans. They poked the Titans. Boop. I said, oh Lord. So they basically saying New England, Tennessee, and Jacksonville is is one and done. It's over for us. So he was like, come on, <laughs> man. What Lord? So I don't know what Amy Adams gonna do, man. But I'm tired. Of, I, I don't own season tickets, no PSLs, no nothing, man. But I, I'm a big supporter and follower of them, man. Yeah. But I, you know, you get t they almost t even though they win, and I still feel a little bit of the old New Orleans Saints from back in the day when they put the bags on their head, man. It's like, <laughs> oh man, please, they're killing me with this, man. You know, yeah. like Pickles just said, Swartz gives up 200 yards getting off the bus. She ain't lying now, <laughs> right. <laughs> right, and and it's funny, like you said, you brought up Schwartz. My friend uh, uh, Kareem at work brought up Schwartz. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia sports guy, way up in Philadelphia, brought up Jim Schwartz. This guy's like bad luck everywhere he goes. Now, Jim Schwartz, this is the same guy when he was coaching for Detroit. He's got real thin skin. Uh, Jim Harbaugh shook his hand too hard one time when he was coaching for the 49ers. He's mm -hmm. going off like he's about to – punch him and stuff they're going back and forth jim's like oh my bad man you know yeah. he's going crazy so eventually uh uh <laughs> he, he gets fired jim force gets fired from detroit and so he then he becomes the defensive coordinator for the buffalo bills when gronkowski is having 180 yards receiving brady's breaking all the the records up there he's their defensive coordinator so one day, uh, the uh, when he's coordinator of Buffalo, the Bills are playing the Detroit Lions, right? So the Lions are still sorry because they were the team he used to coach. So they end up beating the Detroit Lions, which then wouldn't say nothing. This was about eight to ten years ago. So you know what he asked those players to do? Carry him off the field like he was Rudy or something. On, on their we, we wanted to carry him off the field and into the Cumberland River when he was here. <laughs> <laughs> Not only off the field, but down there in the river where, where we would have loved for him to be in. Like you said, man, some, some people just have that that bad aura, man. And he was just one of them, man. I, I just couldn't put my fingers on it, man. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. But Pickle says Saints will call the Aints with bags on their head. They sure was. I think we gonna be Aints. Aints going past the first round in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna yeah. be the new Aints. <laughs> you know, Tennessee. Uh, a guy at work was asking me. Another another gentleman is asking me about the Titans. Uh, so there's four games to go. Uh, you got a two game lead. You know the thing about the Titans. You got a guy like Schwartz. You're taking information from on defense uh what do you think do you think they could still they there's a chance they could still lose this division man hey I, I, what i'm saying man i like i watched uh just the recap of some of the nfl scenarios and thoughts yeah. and what teams uh would get help or what teams are gonna be the spoiler and like i told you man them three off the top of the board they had a, like a big old giant prick type pin, man, and they were the Titans was on the balloon, you know the logo. They had the 
the uh, uh, New England, and they had Jacksonville, and they went boom, boom, boom. I'm like, good God, all three of them in a row. They said they ain't going nowhere, man. And and, and I don't know, man. What what do you you know? I'm gonna turn it around yeah. and ask you, RB. What do you yeah. think? is needed from this organization, man, to, to get over this hump, man, because this one and done stuff. This ain't Kentucky Wildcats back in Colorado, <laughs> man. They got to come better than this every year, man. Quit selling. They, she's selling pipe dreams to these PSL holders every right. year. Uh, tighten up, tighten up. Now, I'm not going to tighten up. We keep playing like that. I'm going to go on go over to Kansas City somewhere and tighten up with right. them. I, yeah. I want to be a part of a winning program, man. This Bring a tr- look. When are we gonna get the uh, Lombardi Trophy down here, man? Right. All- you know something. Uh, it goes back to you don't really see how something is going south until you start losing, and then an incident happens. For instance, when 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 Philadelphia beat the crap out of Tennessee, and Amy Adams strunk, she fires John Robertson. Then you start to look at all those warts and. And all those big, colossal mistakes that he has made. Now, you look at guys like Jack Coughlin. He used to be a right tackle for the Titans. He's up there playing really well with the Cleveland Browns right now. You know, that's part of the offensive line. Tennessee has one of the worst offensive lines. Uh, you look at the guy, he's he's the left guard. Um he, he's up there with the Buffalo Bills now. His name is slipping my mind. He played with Tennessee last year. Tennessee, he was a air quote cap casualty. Uh, you look at the Isaiah Wilson, the guy from Georgia. Dude played seven snaps, Andre. Seven snaps with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Robertson drafts him in the first round. He takes these big risks on guys like Caleb. So all these things start to fall through when you start miss, 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 but you got such a good coach like Brable, you're winning. We don't even think about this stuff. But uh, then you had the fact that Lawan got hurt. at the. So they got a whole new subpar offensive line. They're still running that old school 1988, you know, off left tackle type of offense with uh, Derrick Henry. They need a whole new offensive line, if you ask me. Yeah, work was saying, well, maybe just one or no. Nah, they need – I like Ben Jones, but he's in his 30s. They need a whole new offensive line. They And on top of all that, on top of all that, they paying a guy like Ryan Tannehill $38 million. He should be making half of that. He's not a big – he's not a Patrick Mahomes level of a player. You know, his agent, he's got, like, Carlos, my New Yorker, comes on Friday. He said, well, he's got a good age, just that. I said, yeah, but let somebody else pay him that kind of money. Go back and try to get another – and, of course, my other friend at work, Robert, his name Robert, too. He's like, well, you know, we ain't got a quarterback. Well, don't let them put that fear in you like that. That's what the draft is for. That's what his That's what his job is to get that salary. Now, that's the main thing of, of, a, of a general manager is, is uh you know uh flex that seller cat and that's it's all caught up with them man they're lucky to be where they are right now if you really think about it well i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in here and say to you um and kind of come in on the back end and it i i hate to say it and i don't want my titan uh friends and, and fellow fans to, to be mad at me i'm just you are up, how you play right now they seven and five right yeah they play like a seven and five team. They play like a five hundred average type team, man. If they won out, I, I, it, it would be basically luck, man. If they if they won out, cause like you said about Tannehill, he ain't no Trevor Lawrence. If you ask me, he right. ain't up there with the elite quarterbacks, man. I don't know what it is. I wish I could go to uh, somewhere with him, man. When they uh, X-ray his ankles and his legs, man. Cause I. I to see what what's going on with them man because yeah. the guy is running but he's running what's the term i want to use gingerly running gingerly, real yeah. gingerly, man it's like what is wrong with this dude running this year man it's just something i, I don't think i'm normally wrong about 
most things I try to have a discerning spirit about how I approach and see. Them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they got me back on those Sunday. I, I, well, I did say a little prayer for the tight Sunday. It didn't work. Well, better pray it's for really them this Sunday, weekend. Though, it, it was a lot of turnovers, though. They, I think they were trying too hard Sunday, if you ask me, man. They should have won that game going away. Well, Henry should have held on to that ball a little bit yeah. more, too, man. It's like He's trying too hard. Roger Saffeld is a really good blocker for the Titans pickles. Uh, he He's with the Buffalo Bills now, and they're pushing people off the ball. They're not dominating in the running game, but they have a better – running game than they had this time last year, you know. But ask Pickles this, man, while you got yeah. on the air. Ask her how I see it, too. Whoever generally leaves this organization, they shine like gold, man. They they come out and they play their like best this guy right here, A.J. Brown. Yeah, see? Come on, man. Come on. She she hurt my heart when she put him back on the air. AJ is just, <laughs> hey, man, the guy's incredible, man. I hate to put him and compare him with this guy I'm finna say, but they two different personalities. But AJ Brown is like your boy that, that went from Pittsburgh to, to join um, Brady down in Tampa Bay. You know, oh, Antonio Brown. Yeah, he was just like Antonio. Them, they both are threats out there, man. When you when you get when they get open, man, they gonna they they um uh, they make things happen, man. They and and when you got receivers like that, man, what can you do against them? You see what kind of day he had against us, man. It was just horrible, man. That's why Amy Adams said, "Look, he got to go Monday." I bet you Sunday night after that game, she was sitting around eating a steak and drinking scotch and saying, "He's gone Monday morning." Yeah. The announcement, John is gone. Robinson is out of here. But she don't only need to start with Robinson. She need to get rid of a few other ones too, brother. Yeah, so. of course. Is, he'll screw up a free meal defensively. Um, I, I remember I like Greg Williams. I mean, I've liked a lot of the former Jeff Fisher guys, but Schwartz was the worst. You I don't know. know where he found him at, man. I, 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 truly, <laughs> I truly don't know where they got that guy, man. It's like, it's like the cat that uh, – Jinx the uh, Chicago Cubs years ago. You remember that story? Man, yeah, the black cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what we had with Swartz. He was the cat. I was like, <laughs> 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 Detroit was smart. They got him. He was the epsil of football up there, man. Nobody wanted him up there to stick around. Look, when they don't want you to stick around, you pretty much gone, man. You know, it, it's not what you did yesterday in Tennessee. It's what you're doing right here in Detroit, which is nothing. So, yeah, they got him on yeah. out of there, man. But yeah, it, I thought that was funny. Uh, he He's so petty. He wanted the, the Buffalo – the Bills players, like, we didn't care about – carried him off the field, but he asked us to do it, so we carried him off the field. Yeah. Like I'd, have, I'd have carried him and dropped him. You see what <laughs> <laughs> you see what Pickle said? Amy yeah. Adams told the AP she decided Friday to fire Robinson. Wow. He didn't even get to make it to Sunday. That's a, right. that's, that's crazy, man, knowing you out there on that field, man, uh, and knowing in the back of your mind, am I going to be here on Monday? He so she had a two day jump on him. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, man, he, he's making good money. He'll get an assistant job somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah, player man. personnel. Yeah, and uh, she still got to pay him what what's left on his contract. Like he said, they he just didn't. extended. Uh, him and him and Mike Vrabel, uh, just got extended in February. So we're fresh off an extension. So these owners will fire you even after they give an extension, man. And you know there uh, there was a Heisman Trophy presentation last Saturday. This guy K Caleb Williams from USC. He is the third. He is the third um, Heisman Trophy winner in six years from Lincoln Riley. Here's my thing. Here's my take on Lincoln Riley. Uh, this is the you know former uh, uh, Oklahoma coach. Uh, USC offers him a big chunk of money. Goes to USC. Uh, he, he gets to the playoff at Oklahoma, gets pretty much run by Georgia, and they win what, 11 games this year with USC. My thing is he'll never get the amount of uh, defensive players to beat a, an SEC team. I don't, I don't think he – I think he'll never win a national championship. But I, I do think that he's got a heck of a offensive mind. I would think somebody in the NFL, some owner somewhere, Andre, 
like a owner of the Bears back in 85. Remember Buddy Ryan? Oh, he yeah. was running the defense, but they hired Mike Dicka to simply run the offense. Do you see a situation? What are your thoughts like that happening? What are your thoughts on a Lincoln Riley, man? Man, I think Lincoln Riley must be in the back room at USC melting down uh, stuff to make Heisman trophies, man, because like you said, he had Kyler. He had him, man. He had Spencer Rattler. No, uh, well, Rattler, uh, yeah, he coached him, but he transferred. It was Mayfield, Kyler Murray, and this Caleb Williams kid. Yep, and uh, what about Jalen Hurt? Uh, did Jaylen Yeah, he Hurt? transferred, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, so this guy ain't nothing but a, a Heisman Trophy factory, man. <laughs> Basically, no. I would I would try to offer him some money to bring him somewhere, man, and see what what we can do with him, man. Because I, unless he just don't want to go, you know, some yeah. people don't want to coach in the NFL, man, on any level. Yeah. But you know, them teams like USC, man, they they great schools, man, but. I, I'll say it for my SEC, not being a Southerner, but I will put it out there. Yeah, you gotta have the, you gotta bring the best to play us. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta bring the best, man. You better be stacked on defense and offense, man, because we, <laughs> we ready for you, man. I think we the best conference. I've said it. I'm sure you can argue it with your coworkers. We the best conference in 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 football, bar none. By a long, it's even. I felt like. The gap is even wider now than it was 25 years ago when uh, uh, Steve Spurrier was at Florida, if you ask me. Man, I, I think that – Remember, economy, Nebraska was good back in them days. Oh, yeah, them corn hustles were good, man. Oklahoma. You know, Miami. You had, yeah, you had some talent. Miami, um, they they gave teams fits too, man. They were uh, electrifying. They had their speed and, and had it like Florida, but – you know, Florida had a little speed this year, man, but they just hit that wall, man. And and uh I hope that Billy can can stay one more year with us, man, and see can he turn that program around. Because if he can't, he gonna be joining the Jim Swartz of the world, man. <laughs> <laughs> if Florida Gator faithful ain't going for no another losing season, man. They look, be honest, man. Yeah. It's 43 bowls in college football. 43. Yeah. Everybody got a bowl named after them. I think next year, me and you, God, would have might have a bowl, the Butler Gibson Bowl. Butler Gibson Sports Coat Bowl, man. There you I'll go. They, they handing out bowls like you handing out uh, uh, Cheerios, but man, it, it depends on what kind, man. We ain't talking like orange and fiesta and stuff like we. I'm looking at bowls like Florida's. What kind of bowl is that, man? It's it's ridiculous, man. Everybody want to have a part of that it's college. Now, I don't really like most of them. Um, I was uh, Jalen Hyatt. I think that's his first name. Uh, he won best receiver in the country award. I, I forgot what that award is called. University of Tennessee. And he's opting out of the bowl game. And they're playing Clemson. But well, they're not playing in the playoff game. He's wanting to get ready for the NFL. I understand. Well, when you were talking about uh, Lincoln Riley yeah. and Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams can't go to the NFL either, man, because no. he's two years out from high school and, yeah. he, you know, he got to have that four. And, and if he'll be back next year to, to wreak havoc, he might be a runner up again or one of this. You know, he might get it again. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Well, Bryce Young won it last year, and I thought he was dominating, but he would, but he never did. Uh, uh, a lot of times these guys, when, when they win it their sophomore year, it seems like they pull back that last year because they won't want to get hurt. Yeah, He wants to hold back. He don't. I, my guess is he'll take a step back. Hope not. I like the guy. I like the guy. He he beat out Spencer Rattler, if you recall, last year at mm -hmm. Oklahoma. And then Rattler ended up uh, – so he, re, he uh, transfers to South Carolina, destroys Tennessee – under Frank Beamer's son, uh, some other Shane Beamer. Uh, that guy, Frank Beamer, used to coach for Virginia Tech back in the day. Really good coach, really good uh, special teams back in the day, man. You, uh, that team used to give those really good Miami teams in the early 2000s a run for their money. Uh, but anyways, now, nah, man, this guy's like the quarterback whisperer. Look how offensively – oriented the NFL is 
Now, he's a very young guy. He's not 40 years old. He's younger than me. And uh, he, Mike Leach coached him. Mike Leach, the late, great Mike Leach, uh, I want to say it was either Texas Tech or Oklahoma. He was an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. But he says, man, I'm going to cut you. But oh, you're such a smart guy. You figure this offense out so fast. You're a really good communicator. I want to make you a coach. I want to hire you on as a, as a coach. And, you know, he, he got really irritated. He wanted to play quarterback, you know, uh, Lincoln Riley. And then he says, well, hey, let me go talk about it. And he, he ran it by his parents and everything, girlfriend, coach, high school. So he comes back, takes the job, rest is history. I mean, the guy's got – I've never heard of anybody having three Heisman Trophy winners in, in less than 10 years like that. Have you under one coach? No. I don't think Saban's done that, has he? No, he has not. Man, I, that's that's the uh, Heisman Trophy factory, man. And, <laughs> I'm you, that's, where you go, that's where you go to play and, and, and candidate and lobby for a Heisman, man. So being yeah. that coach, that's what he's going to try to put out there on that field year after year. I'm going to give you – the fans are Heisman worthy quarterback. And you think about it, man, when you got that, like, even like a Johnny football, man, I'm just yeah. going to point. Right. right. A, With Texas A&M. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. got a Heisman quarterback out there, man, every Saturday, you want to see him play. I want to see what, just what this guy got. Like yeah. I just saw you, uh, Carlos Chavez, the second said SEC has his yields. And yeah. uh, he, he said USC better reload on an offensive coordinator and some offensive weapons. Yeah, that, that don't hurt you to have them. Yeah. <laughs> you do better with them than without them. Right, yeah, right. Said, hey, um, so uh, it, it, going back to Jalen Hurts. Now, Jalen Hurts played for him at Oklahoma. Now, remember Tua, going back to Tua at the beginning of the conversation, uh, Tua uh, beat out Jalen Hurts. He beat him out at Alabama. We know about that. He makes the big throws as a true freshman. Alabama, back in 2018, I want to say, beat Georgia in the national championship. Hurts is hurt, but he's man ups, and, and he transfers to Oklahoma. This is what's really impressive about Hurts. He didn't win a Heisman Trophy winner under the great quarterback whisper Lincoln Riley. I wasn't even that impressed with Hertz, um, even after he went uh, and played under uh, Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, he still gets drafted in the second round. Now this guy's playing at an MVP level. That tells you how hard he's been working and, and where he's come from. Uh, because look at other guys that Lincoln Riley has did well. Baker Mayfield's pretty much a bust. He's been on three teams, by the way, in 12 months. That's pretty much a bust. Kyler Murray, people still talking about him. He tore his ACL the other day. Uh, there's discussions about, you know, maybe maybe Arizona shouldn't have extended him, you know. Maybe this was all about the quarterback whisper up there, Lincoln Riley. But I think this guy, Caleb Williams, I think he's more talented than these other quarterbacks, man. Don't you think so? Yeah. He seems uh, to be I'm a better waiting, athlete. I'm just waiting for him to – to come to the next level, man. Uh, since he ain't gonna get to come next season, so you know, we, <laughs> you know, what? I think he is ready. Yeah, I thought Trevor Lawrence was ready after his freshman year, man. As good as he played for Clemson, man, I, I'm feeling good about Trevor Lawrence, man. I call him the Joe name of, of uh, Jacksonville, man. I like the guy, man, with the long hair, man, and yeah. flowing, and, and he's making things happen. I think the guy can only get better. Keep them weapons around him, and Jacksonville yeah. is gonna start causing us fits. Like when we had when they had little Maurice Drew, y'all remember him? How he used to run the middle? Yeah, man. I think Jacksonville gonna show us something. You just watch and see what I tell you. I'm predicting it right now, like the Ali of sports talk. He's finna do something, man. You just watch, watch Jacksonville down the stretch. Now, I think they really right. destroyed Tennessee for years. You would hope they would not have another all time quarterback in the division like that. Well, you know, you 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 get a student of the game, man. Look, we got one that that need to come on out of the game. Uh, Brady, he he's um he's a student. After that whooping that 49ers put yeah. on him, he even signed the lineman's football for him. I thought that was pretty classy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't nothing he could do with it. So, what do, do you think? think he'll, uh, I think there's a possibility he may try to either go to the 49ers next year. 
He may go here. I think it's crazy at 46 years old. Do you think that uh, – what do you think he'll – not what, you, what me and you think he should do. What do you think Brady's going to do? Man, I think for some reason, I think Brady had to set the oldest player in the league record or something, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why this guy keep coming back. I'm going to tell you what Rex Ryan said, man, and I agree with Ryan. Yeah. He, he Ryan can say some smart stuff sometimes. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm on, hey, on occasion, you'll get a quip from him. <laughs> but he said one today that I like, man. He said, basically, and you ain't going to hear a lot of, Coaches and former players say this about Brady. And it wasn't a put down of, of Brady. It wasn't a crack on him. He said he basically getting tired of seeing Brady, man. He said he needs to start streaming all his games. He said he just tired of watching him, man. And, and me, in a way, I'm kind of tired too, man. This guy has had his moment in the sun. He Look, he got more rings than he'll ever uh, – Anybody, who else in the NFL got as many Super Bowls as this guy, man? Right? I don't think anybody. Now, anybody. Uh, Charles Haley's got five. Yeah. Uh, that's the only player close that I can think of, yeah. player-wise, that's got it, uh, what he's got, you know? And I kind of agree with his wife, George man. Blit too. Blit enough. Yeah, that's the uh, pickle says Brady wants the George Blitna status, oldest quarterback. She I don't right. know how long was Blanda, George Blanda Pickles? Almost 50 years. That guy was like 49 years old, man. He was ready for Social Security. playing for the Raiders, man. Like, come on, man. Damn, do you owe I, – I want. I used to want to ask George Blanda, do you owe Al Davis some money or something? Why are you still, out there? <laughs> Why are you still playing, man? Get off the field, man. You can't even run, man, but – but Pickles is right. Pickles is in my head tonight. Thank you, yeah. Pickles, because I couldn't think of who the player was, but it was George Blanders. She right on. He he was like the oldest one. This dude is a runner up. How old is yeah. Brady, man? I can't. Brady, Brady will be forty six next year. Uh, I believe Blanda was pretty close to fifty. Uh, <laughs> Brady's gonna play until they peel him off. That why does he want it to be really bad? I don't understand. Why do you want to stay to it so bad where they're just where people are cringing, you know, man, after each sack, you know. This guy must be on the Doug Flutie medicine, man. He, and Frank Thomas, he must be drinking at uh, New Gina's or something, man. Right. What's keeping this guy around so long, man? He Give yeah. him credit. His work regimen, man, is second to none ever right. Did, right. right. Cal Shannon, did you, did you uh, hear that Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless – uh, rant back and forth on Monday on Brady. Mm -mm, they were going mean. off. Uh, Shannon Sharp is is uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, taking his glasses off with Skip Bayless. <laughs> Put your glasses on because Skip <laughs> Bayless thinks Brady's God, you know. Uh -huh. And Shannon Sharp's just telling the truth. He says, how can anybody get downfield? Brady gets rid of the ball in like two seconds. He don't want to get hit. And I don't mm -hmm. blame Brady. They have a backup offensive line in there. He's 150 years old in football years, you know. Uh, he's not going to get blasted. He practices falling down in the offseason. That's why he couldn't do it. Of course, Skip Bayless is – I don't know if it's stick or whatever, man. But either way, um, Brady, he understands that when, when, when X, Y, and Z offensive line's in there, I'm getting rid of this thing in like one point. If I can't get it to the running back, I'm not getting blasted, man. I'm not getting my chin bloody. But then again, you're not going to be able to win a lot of games that way without taking a hit. That was their whole argument, you know. When that guy, like Peyton, when they say Omega, Zebra, Astro, whatever the, the cadence is, yeah. he ain't Omaha. doing nothing. He's doing two. He ain't doing five or six. He's doing two. Like you said, quick release, man. Quick release. But – like you said, if you don't get a player's time to get downfield and make a play on it, man, it's all for naught. But like Pickles just said, George Blunder was 48 years and 109 days old. Good Lord. <laughs> so he needs two more years. Brady could probably pull it off. He can get 48. You can pull 48 out of his body, man. But if he takes some shots, you ain't going to get 48 out of him. I guarantee you, brother. <laughs> <laughs>
you gonna get forty six and done. That's that's what gives. Would you take with. him over the top if he came here? Would, would you rather have him than than uh, maybe cut a uh, a forty six year old next year Tom Brady over um, who do we got at Tannehill? Lord have mercy, man. Tan Tannehill ain't forty eight years old, but no, nah, he's like thirty four. <laughs> he run like a forty eight year old at times. I don't know, man. I, I I people would love to come out and just to see what Brady can still do, but yeah, nah, no, nah, man. I I rather stick with old number seventeen, old Cannonball. I'll stick with the <laughs> Cannonball, man. I I, I, don't, I wouldn't want Brady coming here. I don't think Brady can deal with that cold weather no more, man. Them old joints start aching after a while, yeah. man. Hey, yeah. ask Brett Favre. He can tell you. Them, hey, them hits up in Lambo don't feel too good when you start getting old, man. So, nah. Yeah. He just need to retire, man. Brady is a very nice-looking guy. He got all the mechanics. Go and, and do some commentating, man. Uh, Go yeah. on channel. You know, I'd love to see him do that, man. It's, He's been offered an unprecedented amount of money to go to Fox Sports as soon as he's ready to take it. You that's know? what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, uh, what did Carlos say? Titans don't do it. No, I, I, I agree with Carlos. No, we, that <laughs> one, boy, I, I'd rather get anybody other than Brady. And people say, man, he's a Hall of Famer. It don't matter, man. I just can't see him being the answer for them, man. Who do you think is out there, man, that we could get it at QB? Uh, there's been talks of maybe Aaron Rodgers. Now, he's 39, you know. Well, we can uh, buy a little time with him, though, RB. We can get yeah, you, you could buy it, – it, it depends on what they would want to do with Tannehill and his contract. They could probably – his contract is nowhere near as bad next year as it is this year. Uh, probably do something like that. Maybe spruce up that offensive line and keep Tannehill. Uh, I just think Malik Willis is super raw, man. He, I don't think he's ready, man. Uh, either that or just go out and maybe try to draft another quarterback. Uh, they don't have too many options. I don't think they're going to go after Garoppolo or anybody like that, no. But can I ask Carlos a question? If yeah. you don't mind, man, I, and yeah. I know you're going to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. He says they had Collins. Is he talking about Kerry Collins from yeah. the old Carolina Panthers? And, and and the New York Giants in 2000. Titans had him when he's like 37. Uh, I ain't going to touch that one, man. Kyle <laughs> Collins was horrible, dude. He was real horrible, man. He he didn't even want to throw to Randy Moss, man. He wanted yeah. to use Randy as a decoy. He was horrible, man. We don't need no more Kerry Collinses. I think the only reason he came to Nashville is because he wanted to branch out in country music. <laughs> that's, what, that's what that legend has said about him. They said the only thing he was interested in is getting a country music contract. But now nah, he wasn't our answer either, man. You know, I saw Warren Moon on TV the other day talking about um, getting your COVID shots. They they were on Channel 5. Bring Warren back. Yeah, hey, bring somebody like Warren back, you know. But, hey, man, ain't no more Warrens and Steve McNair's out there, man. So we got to take what we got, man. Yeah, yeah, we got Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on tonight. We go through this hour pretty quick. It's like a lightning round, you know? Man, we're going to try to pay for a two-hour round one of these nights, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually hey, seeking out go to the – week. I was wanting to get into some NBA next week. Well, hey, man. Uh, I know to we're pushing to... up on Christmas next week, but it'd be a good week to discuss, you know, uh, discuss the NBA, you know, who, who who's breaking out, you know, and – uh, what do you think about the Boston Celtics and where they're at and all that? We'll get into that, though. Okay. Not all NBA, because there will always be a good NFL story, but well, we get Pickles, into some NBA. Well, your girl Pickle said that Aaron Rodgers is 39. Looks like he's 59. He's got that gray beard. He does look about 59 sometimes. But can he still throw that pig skin down? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. Well, he's got a house down here. and stuff. There, there's been talk of the Aaron Rodgers thing. Tennessee would have to get – I don't know what they would have to trade for him. It's a lot of logistics. It was something that the new general manager is going to have to figure out. He's going to be up uh, in the middle of the night putting numbers together, trying to make it work on paper. Well, say this and let you run off, man. Uh, yeah. I remember they said the same when they were trying to get Peyton years ago. Don't you remember what they yeah. said? They offered him a – made it happen, didn't they? Yeah, they traded him a, a – a, they said they'll give him a, a helicopter and a, a 
on the half ownership in the Shonis Corporation, where you see where Shonis went and you see what <laughs> <laughs> you see what Peyton don't see him no more. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Peyton wasn't crazy. He said, no, thank you. But Pickle, she right. This was a fun show tonight, man. Thank you for letting me like slide the family stone. Be myself, brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family affair. I there you that. go. There you go. Pickles. <laughs> hopefully we'll see you, God willing, whenever he bring me back. All right, man. I'll see you same time, same place next week. All right, man. Appreciate it, everybody. Good night, everybody.